Well, today we are continuing with our, our fearless sermon series. And fear, no surprise to any of us, is, is a part of life. It's something that we all experience and we see a great deal of things in the world that we do fear. Now, I think the dark side of fear is that it can paralyze us. It can keep us from living the life that God wants us to have. Faith comes into play in this in that it, it doesn't wipe away our fears. It doesn't cause them to disappear, but it does help us deal with our fears in constructive and faithful ways. And that's what I want us to be considering uh, today and even next Sunday. The scripture that I'm going to read for you in just a moment is one that I hope will help us all think through ways that we can live courageously, uh, that we can live with courage in the face of those things that we do fear. The scripture comes from Daniel chapter 3, and I'll read verses 12 through 28. And if you have your Bibles, I invite you to open up and follow along. This is a a rather long scripture, so I want to encourage you to hang in there and listen to all of it. Um, it, It's it's an extraordinary story, um, and it has a lot to teach us. And to give you just a a little background of what happens just before um, the scripture that I'll be reading, King Nebuchadnezzar, he's king of Babylon, had built a large golden idol, and he asked all of his people to bow down and, and worship this idol. And, uh, and that's where we pick up. There are some Chaldeans who've come and reported to the king that three men have chosen not to bow down and worship. And that's where our, our story goes. So I'll pick up now with verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue? That I have set up. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, 
come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we pray that we will learn to live with courage and to always trust you. Amen. Now, we do see lots of fear in the world today, and there are lots of things that we should fear. But many of our fears are simply made up in our minds, and they do nothing more than fill us with worry and anxiety, and that keeps us from enjoying the abundant life that Jesus offers to us. So what can we do with our fears? Well, we're grappling with this question in this month's sermon series. Now, in this series, I'm not saying or even suggesting that if you have enough faith, then you won't have any fears. The truth of the matter is that fear is a part of life. Now, what I want us to consider is how we can deal with our fears in the most faithful way possible. And today I want us to specifically talk about how we might live with courage in the face of those things that we fear. You know, there are many stories in the Bible of people who faced great fears. And I would imagine those folks feel, felt scared, intimidated, anxious, and fearful. And yet, when many of them were faced with the choice of following God or giving into their fears, they chose to be obedient to the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three young men who were faced with one of the most difficult decisions a person could face. It was a life or death matter. Now, as we reflect on their lives, I think it is helpful to understand some of the historical background at, that comes with the book of Daniel. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, who was king of Babylon, had attacked and conquered Judah in the year 605 BC. After gaining this victory, Nebuchadnezzar ordered that the best and the brightest of Judah be deported to Babylon. And his plan was to take these people for three years and to train them and then utilize their skills by giving them places in the royal court. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were part of this. Now, all of the training that they received was, I think, more or less an attempt to brainwash them. It was a process of assimilation and indoctrination into Babylonian culture. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and others like them, to thank and act like all the other Babylonians did. Now these three even had their names changed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Abednego weren't their original names. Their original names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And while the Babylonians could change their names, they couldn't change their hearts. Now we see this play out at a dedication service for a golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had built. This statue was 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Some scholars have suggested that it was like an obelisk, like the Washington Monument in D.C., or even a tall, skinny statue of the king himself. But regardless of what it looked like, a herald proclaimed, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not 
fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. So when the music started playing, everyone bowed down except for three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now given the situation that they were in, I don't think any of us would have been surprised if they decided to do a little compromising to give in to the king's order. Uh, you know, nobody wants to be thrown into a blazing hot furnace. It would be a terrible way to die. Plus, fear, the fear of death is one of the greatest fears people have. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't afraid. They chose to live with courage instead of fear. Now, these three were people just like you and me. They were young men who had hopes and dreams for the future. They wanted to advance in their careers. They, they wanted to keep their jobs in the king's court so that they could be around to help their people. And they certainly didn't want to die. But they were faced with a terrible choice. They could worship the golden statue or they could be burned alive. It's a terrible, terrible choice. Now, what would you do if you were in their shoes? I think we might come up with some pretty creative ideas as to why it wouldn't be so bad to worship that golden statue. You know, we might say to ourselves, okay, I'll bow, bow down and pretend that I'm worshiping, but I really won't worship. Or we might say, okay, I'll worship this one time, but after it's over, I'll ask God for forgiveness. Now, the problem with that kind of thinking is that it keeps us from uh, embracing the opportunity to be courageous. We skipped over that opportunity to live with real courage. And courage is needed any time we face something that we fear. I want to share with you just a couple observations that I have about courage. The first one is this. Most things are never as hard as we fear they will be. Now, even if we end up losing, even if we end up failing at something, the pain of that failure is almost never as bad as we worry that it will be. Second observation is that courage involves a willingness to act. Now, that's important because uh, fear can paralyze us. It can keep us from doing anything. Last week I shared with the folks upstairs, and I think Tyler shared this with you all down here, an acronym for fear. Um, it's an acronym that points us to an action plan. And it goes like this. Face your fears with faith. Examine your assumptions in light of the facts. Attack your anxieties with action. And then release your cares to God. A plan like this can keep us from getting stuck. It can keep us from getting paralyzed. And then a third observation is that living with courage isn't easy. And when we're at a fork in the road, when we have a decision to make, we'll have one path that seems easier and safer and one that's harder and riskier. And I think more often than not, taking the harder path, the riskier one, the one that keeps us up at night, is actually the one that we should take. Now, Jesus talked about this using some different terms. He said that one of the roads that we can take in life is broad and easy, but it will lead to destruction. And there's this other road he talks about that is narrow and hard, but it leads to life. The point here is that living with courage requires us to make a choice. It is a choice that we make, and it involves taking risk despite any fear that we might have. And faith comes into this by reassuring us that regardless of the outcomes, even the worst thing that can happen is not the end of the road because God still rules over the universe. And even if we fail, God can make something good come of it. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made the faithful choice to live with courage. They made the decision to not give up and give in to their fears. They made the choice to not abandon their faith, even in the face of great, great danger. And so living with courage takes a resilient spirit. We see this with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King Nebuchadnezzar had had pressured them to bow down and worship the golden statue. On two separate occasions, the king had ordered them to do this. He even threatened them with the death penalty. And the fear of a, a fiery death could have gotten the best of them. But these three men didn't give up. They didn't give in. They chose to be resilient and to live with courage. A man named Doanne Robinson also lived with a courageous and resilient spirit. Before his death in 1946, Doanne had a bold idea. It was a bold idea to get people to travel to his home state of South Dakota. And we should remember that back then, not many people were visiting South Dakota. But his idea was to create a massive sculpture out of the side of a mountain. Now, many people thought this was just a, a ridiculous, harebrained idea. He was criticized mercilessly for it. And that was painful for him. It was hurtful to hear other people saying so many mean things about him. But Doanne didn't give up. He persisted. And today, Mount Rushmore is one of the most iconic sculptures in the United States. Every year, more than two million people visit South Dakota because of this massive sculpture. Now, courage is doing what we know we should do in the face of pressure intimidation or even rejection living with courage involves making the choice to not give up in the face of our greatest fears Shadrach Meshach and Abednego's resilient and courageous spirit was a product of their faith they show, and they show us that living with courage requires us to trust in God now their trust in God led them to say to the king O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. This is a statement of faith and trust in God. Even when things look bleak, even when it looked like everything was going to fail for them, they knew the reality. And that reality is that God reigns. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's faith wasn't a faith just of words, thoughts, and feelings. It was a faith of action. They lived courageously because they trusted in God. And a faith that trusts in God knows that God is present with us. So when it finally came time for these three to make a decision about worshiping the golden statue, they chose to remain obedient to God. And that enraged King Nebuchadnezzar. And so he had them bound and thrown into the fiery furnace. But to his surprise, they weren't killed. They weren't even injured. In fact, the king jumped to his feet in amazement and said to his advisors, was it not three men that were bound and thrown into the fire? And they answered the king, true, O king. And he replied, but I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire and they are not hurt and the fourth has the appearance of a god so when Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace he couldn't believe his eyes Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were unharmed 
Instead of being tied up, they were free, walking around unharmed. Instead of there being three people in this furnace, there were four. Now, scholars aren't quite sure who the fourth person was. Some Bible translations say that it was an angel. But whoever it was, I like to think that it represents the presence of God. And whenever we face something that we fear, it serves us well to remember that God is with us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were unharmed by the fire. The hair on their heads was unsinged. Their robes were not burned. There wasn't even any smell of fire on them. And that finally led King Nebuchadnezzar to say, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any other god than their own god. They knew that God was with them. And throughout the scriptures, we see that God promises us again and again to be with us. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. And then two chapters later, it says, When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame will not consume you. There's certainly a lot that we should fear in the world today. But we can choose to live courageously by trusting in God. And the beauty of living with courage is that it enables us to live a fuller life. It enables us to experience more of the abundant life that Jesus Christ offers to us. And so as you confront the things in your own life that you fear, I want to encourage you to be courageous. It is something you can do. God is with you and will help you face anything that makes you afraid. And I want to also encourage you to remember our little acronym that you can face your fears with faith. Examine your assumptions in light of the, fact, the facts. Attack your anxieties with action. And then release your concerns to God. That is an action plan that will help us all deal with whatever it is that fills us with fear.